did they hide from us the fact that Samson of the uh, ancient, of ancient Israel, the Old Testament, one of the judges, was Greek? Why did they hide that? He was of the tribe of Dan. Some theories link the Danites, the Danes, to the mysterious kingdom of Dana, Danuna. Another theory says that the Danes, Danites, Dania, Danuna were one and the same. A hitherto unknown tribe came to light called the Dan tribe, bringing with it a rare archaeological treasure. We know the tribe of Dan was, were the Spartans of ancient Greece. According to Genesis, Dan was one of Jacob's 12 sons, with Bala as his mother. He and his tribe are not among the great protagonists of the Old Testament. However, according to what is written, it seems that this tribe of Israel was a predictable force, perhaps the second largest at some point. And according to the Bible, Dan was one of the two children of Balah, who in turn was the healer of Jacob's wife, Rachel. Some have suggested that this suggests that Dan and his brother Naphtali may not have been of Israeli descent, and the diversity of the tribe, this tribe that Moses once prophesied would rush out of Bashan like a little lion, has been the subject of analysis and discussion by academics, biblical scholars, and so on. According to an article in the Hearts newspaper, the Israeli newspaper, the Israelites conquered Canaan, and its land was divided between the tribes, with the exception of the Dan tribe, Unhappy, the Danes headed north, there the, uh, the Danites, that is, the tribe of Dan, headed north where they conquered and destroyed the city of Laïs or Lesham, which they rebuilt and named after their ancestor Dan. The excavations at Tel Dan began in 1966 under the direction of Avraham Biram, Biran and continued until 1999. After a pause of several years, Dr. David Ilan of the Jewish Union College renewed the excavation and based on old materials and new findings, began to suspect that an old theory about the origin of the tribe of Dan, the Danites, first proposed by Michael Astur and Yigal Yadin in the 1960s may be correct, although their idea was at odds with the biblical narrative. That is, the Danites did not, began, uh, did not begin as a tribe of Israel, but descended from the people of the Aegean. Excavators in Dan also found ships decorated with then Aegean-style birds, chalices, cups, and a silo, and strange brain-shaped stones that may have been used in rituals. Elan points out, the most famous Danite in the Bible is Samson a very important archetype of the Greek hero. He is very strong, his power is in his long hair, he tells riddles and hangs out with Philistine women. Now the thing is that the Danites, the Spartans, had long hair and they uh, were very meticulous in looking very beautiful and even uh, uh, coiffuring their hair before going into battle. These are the Spartans, the tribe of Dan. Now, other theories link the Dans, the, da the Danites, to the mysterious kingdom of Danuna, referred to ancient inscriptions found in Turkey or Danian, a tribe of invaders belonging to the peoples of the seas. There's also another theory how the Danites, Danes or Danian, and Danuna were one and the same. The city of Dan, the city was built at a strategic point near the southern foot of the highest mountain of the Golan Heights. According to the data of the Middle East, this is particularly fertile area, which was an important position on the road, a trade route that connected Tyre with Damascus of Syria. The first settlements there were created 7,000 years ago in the Neolithic period. In the middle of the Bronze Age in 2000 BC, it was a prosperous city, that's 4,000 years ago, while at the end it was commercially connected with states and cities in the Eastern Mediterranean, including Sidon, Tyre, Egypt, Cyprus, and of course, the Mycenaeans in Greece. Mycenaeans being where the area of Sparta is. As we said, the tribe of Dan was, uh, Sp the Spartans were the tribe of Dan. Now, the arrival of mercenaries. In any case, if mercenaries from the Aegean arrive in Dan at some point, they would be easily recruited 
and their employers would be the Egyptian rulers of Canaan, who would seek to use them to maintain order in the region. Archaeological finds that indicate that Canaan was under the control or even strong influence of the Egyptians have been found extensively in Israel. The Egyptians began raiding the lands of Canaan for looting and slavery 15th century BC. Although there was a break in the 14th century, a period of instability in Egypt, during which the Hittites became a major power in the region. For this reason, in the 13th century BC, the Egyptians seemed to have changed their policy. Instead of subordinate leaders, they set up a network of strongholds and administrative centers in Canaan in the face of the Hittite threat. Egyptian utensils, weapons, and everyday objects were found in Tel Dan, the, the area of the tribe of Dan. Elan believes that Laïs or Dan was under Egyptian control for much of the late Bronze Age. And I've translated this for you from a Greek article. And also what we know about Dan, as we said before, Samson was of the tribe of Dan. The Hebrew uh, Bible, Samson, man of the sun, was the last of the judges of the ancient Israelites mentioned in the book of Judges, chapter 13 to 16, and one of the last leaders who judged Israel before the institution of the monarchy, that is, King Saul, then King David, and Saul, and so on. He is sometimes considered as an Israelite version of the popular Near East folk hero, also mentioned in the Sumerian Endiku and the Greek Hercules. Okay? The biblical account states that Samson was a Nazarite and that he was given immense strength to aid him against his enemies and allow him to perform superhuman feats, including slaying a lion with his, large, with his bare hands, massacring an entire army of Philistines using only the jawbone of a donkey. However, if Samson's long hair were cut, then his Nazarite vow would be violated and he would lose his strength. And that's what exactly what happened. Samson betrayed by his lover Delilah, who sent by the Philistines officially to entice him, orders a servant to cut his hair while he is sleeping and turn him over to the Philistine enemies, who gouge out his eyes, force him to grind grain in the mill at Gaza. While there, his hair begins to grow again, and when the Philistines take Samson into their temple of Dagon, Samson asks to rest against one of the pillars, supporting pillars of the temple. After being granted permission, he prays to God and miraculously recovers his strength, allowing him to bring down the columns, collapsing the temple, killing himself as well as all of the Philistines. In some Jewish tradition, Samson is believed to have been buried in Zorah in Israel, overlooking the Sorek Valley. Samson has been the subject of both rabbinic and Christian commentary, with some Christians viewing him as a type of, a type of Jesus based on similarities between their lives. Notable depictions of Samson include John Milton's Closet drama Samson Agonistus and Cecil B. DeMille's 1949 Hollywood film Samson Delilah. And Samson also plays a major role in Western art and traditions. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.